Hello, this is a demonstration of full stack JavaScript development for Internet of Things. I have a Raspberry Pi, which is my Internet of Thing device, and that is coded in JavaScript on Node.js. Uh, I also am using the Accelerator mobile backend as a service for my Internet of Things server, which is hosted in the cloud. And then I'm using the Accelerator Titanium SDK to build a cross-device iPhone, Android, Windows 8 mobile application, which will allow me to um, configure and get, get notifications from the Internet of Things device while I'm outside of the house or inside of the house because it's interfacing with the Accelerator um, cloud service. So let me show you what it does. So here's the application uh, TIoT. I'll run that. It's a very simple uh, demonstration app, not, not a fancy user interface, user experience, just intended to show the capabilities of this demo. And the first thing I notice is the device is connected. So I have the ability to know when the device is connected because I've configured the Raspberry Pi to, to periodically send a heartbeat to the Accelerator MBAS so that connected applications like this iPhone app will be able to know when it's connected and communicating with the MBAS. And if it doesn't send that heartbeat, it will time out and then I'll know it's disconnected. The next thing I see is a way to turn on something. So I just press the turn on button and that will turn on the LED on the Raspberry Pi. And that really uh, demonstrates the ability to remotely control something in an IoT device. So this could be turning on an alarm system. This could be unlocking a door. Uh, this could be raising uh, the temperature on, on a thermostat. So I have demonstrated the ability through a mobile application uh, to remotely uh, configure the Internet of Things device. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off that LED, and then I'm also going to exit the application. So I've exited the application, and I'm out and about doing uh, my job, and let's say the Internet of Things device, this Raspberry Pi, also has a sensor connected to it which is represented by this switch. So when I press this switch, uh, I want to be notified in the application that something happened. And I can see that I've been notified. Now, maybe that was a motion sensor in a camera or a breakage sensor for glass. So there's a break-in in the house. And now I've been notified. Um, I can read some information from the server. I know what happened. And now I can take action. So there you see in JavaScript on the, the Accelerator MBAS, the Absolute Titanium SDK, and on the Raspberry Pi, I was able to build a simple proof of concept for the Internet of Things. Uh, here I just want to show you the Raspberry Pi device um, that was used in the demonstration. So I'm not sure if you can get a good view of this, but here's the actual breadboard uh, that was used to configure the LED and the switch. So again, the LED was used to represent something that I'm controlling remotely, and the switch was used uh, as some sort of uh, sensor or input. That's the drop cam, kind of reloading. Um, there is the actual Raspberry Pi device itself, and you can see I have really no connection other than power uh, and, and Wi-Fi. No, I guess I should slow down and wait for the video to, cap to catch up. So you can see, hopefully, that it just has power through the, the micro USB, um, and it has a Wi-Fi connection through the Wi-Fi dongle. And that's how this Internet of Things device will actually connect to the Internet and communicate with the Absolute mobile backend as a service. Uh, and by also having my mobile app communicate with the Absolute MBAS, I'm able to hence you know, have two-way communications between a remote mobile application and this uh, Internet of Things device. So that's the Raspberry Pi. So we're going to briefly look at the code um, in the three different components of the uh, Internet of Things proof of concept demonstration. Uh, namely, we've got the Accelerator Titanium cross-device mobile application. So we'll look at uh, some of the JavaScript code there built to, to build a cross-device native app. We'll take a look at the Internet of Things server that's implemented in the Accelerator mobile backend as a service, and that's um, an express uh, JavaScript application running on Node ACS. And then finally, we'll take a look at the, um, the uh, uh, Raspberry Pi JavaScript code that's also running on Node uh, 
uh, on the Debian Wheezy Linux operating system on the Raspberry Pi. So those are the three major components. So three applications we'll take a look at. Um, so first, I'm in. Let's start off with the mobile backend as a service, and let me bring up the code for that. That is the node server. And here we go. A lot of windows to move around. Okay, so uh, this is just a folder on my um, on my computer, and you can see I have a simple um, app.js file, package.json, um, and that's it. So it's a very simple, lightweight application. And really what it does, it requires in a couple of modules, namely the accelerator MBAS module, ACS-node. It initializes the connection to the uh, MBAS, which will allow me to store users. Um, I need to store users so I can send a push notification. Uh, I require an express, and in essence, build uh, an express-based server right here, which is going to listen um, for web service calls. And I've got a bunch of web service calls to find here. I have to get the value so the Raspberry Pi can get the value, whether it should set the LED on or off. The mobile app can set the value on or set the value off. Um, and then the Raspberry Pi can also send a heartbeat. So this JavaScript code in this heartbeat call is going to uh, trigger a timer. And if I don't get a heartbeat web service call in a certain amount of time, I'll, I'll, I'll detect that the Raspberry Pi is not connected anymore. Uh, I can get the heartbeat. This really is from the mobile app, so I can detect whether the device is connected. Um, and then when a button is clicked on the Raspberry Pi, uh, I will make this web service call, which will, in essence, send a push notification to the app. Um, the app, of course, needs to log in. So this is my, oh, so the, the Internet of Things server needs to log in to the MBAS, so uh, I have a login here, and I'm only using one, one user for all of this, but this could have been an admin user for managing the push notifications. Uh, and finally, here's the sending of the push notification. I'm sending it to all, all channels. So this is really meant as a simple example. Um, you can enhance this to make it more flexible for more users, more devices, etc. So all I need to do is really just publish this it's already published, so I'll republish it. And now there's my um, there's my server running at this URL. Okay. Um, well, one thing I can also do is I can look at the log of that. Let's leave that up and running. So you can see I actually did a successful login here um, from the Internet of Things server to ACS. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move over to the mobile application. So let me run the mobile app. And the mobile app um, is, is seeing that the, the um, Raspberry Pi is disconnected. So I can't even turn it on. So this, is, this button is disabled. Uh, we'll take a look at the code for that, but let me leave this log on so we can see what's happening as we progress through the different components of the system. Okay, uh, so you see basically that the IoT server just exposes a bunch of REST APIs for both the uh, mobile app and the Raspberry Pi and implements the logic of detecting when the Raspberry Pi is, is, is communicating with it um, and also um, uh, receiving calls from the mobile application. So what does the mobile app do? Um, it also will will require in some, some modules um, and then it gets the state. So what I'm doing is I'm just making REST API calls here to that to that URL. You can see I'm calling get value. So based on the value I'll know um, I will know if the uh, if the device is, is connected or not. That's the state. Uh, get heartbeat uh, determines whether the device is connected. I can also turn on 
and I can also turn off uh, the LED. Um, and here's what happens when the application starts. Um, uh, when the application starts, it gets the state of the LED, whether it was connected or not. This will allow multiple devices to control the LED. Uh, and it will also get the heartbeat um, to detect if the, if the uh, Raspberry Pi is actually connected. Then it gets a push token, uh, calls the get heartbeat, um, sets an interval for calling that get heartbeat, so I'll know if it gets disconnected after start. Uh, and then, of course, I log in as well um, from the mobile application. And that's all running. And you can see that the IoT server, since the Raspberry Pi is not connected, it's actually um, fire, it's, it's firing off that timer, um, setting the device not connected state. And that's what my mobile app detected. So now let's fire up the Raspberry Pi. So here I've got a terminal, and I'm already connected to the Raspberry Pi. And I can switch over to my applications. And this is called node client. And let me start this. And you can see that um, it's detecting that the LED is in the off state because that's what the, uh, the last mobile application that connected to the server must have um, set the LED off. But soon the mobile app ah, there, the mobile app now detected that the Raspberry Pi is on and now it's connected. So I can turn on uh, the LED. And soon we'll see that the server is set for on. So this command was sent to the I, uh, Internet of Things uh, server, which is the accelerator mobile back end of the service. And then when the Raspberry Pi went to check the state, it detected that somebody wanted that LED on. Now I can turn the LED off. So the next time the Raspberry Pi checks, it will see that we want this off. The last thing I'm going to do, you can't see this, is, um, well, first let me exit the app. You can't see this, but I'm going to push the button on the Raspberry Pi, and you'll see the Raspberry Pi detect the button pressed, made a call to the uh, Accelerator MBAS, which fired off this push notification. And then I can launch the application. And if we look at the logs on the server, we should be able to trace all of that. So first it saw the device not connected, then it saw that it is connected, um, and then it also detected a button click and sent a push notification. So let's go take a look at this Raspberry Pi code. Um, it's pretty simple. So, you know, it's requiring HTTPS. It's also requiring a module called, uh, an NPM called on-off. Um, which uh, allows the Raspberry Pi to toggle, uh, set, and read GPIO pins on the Raspberry Pi. And you can see I've got an LED and a button, and I'm going to get the value from the Accelerator MBAS, meaning what's the correct setting for the LED, and then I will write that LED. It's also going to call a heartbeat function, and that's going to sit in some sort of timer. Uh, I've got a listener on the button uh, to detect when it's um, pressed. Um, I've also got some timeout here. This is for debouncing of a button because each click of the button actually registers a couple button clicks. Um, and this is the call to the server when the button is clicked. And then the server, of course, will then send a push notification. Uh, here's some cleanup code. And here's the initialization code, setting up some timers for the heartbeat, some timer to read the... Um, LED value from the server, and then you know calling the initial heartbeat and, and get value. Uh, and that's it. It's pretty simple, but very powerful. Um, you, know, you have a, a lot of asynchronous communication because you have three different players in, the, in, in this. You have the mobile application, you have the Absolutor MBAS acting as the Internet of Things server, and then you have the Raspberry Pi, which is the Internet of Things device. So hopefully that was useful and um, Stay tuned for more demos.